In this video, I want to go over a lot of the different things that I use to do in Obsidian that I do in Neovim. So I just want to show you how I do all of that in case that you're planning on moving over from Obsidian to Neovim. If you don't want to do all of this yourself and start from the beginning, you can download my configuration. I left the commands here. Notice that you can just clone it and run it. This is just in case you want to test out individual things before you implement them in your own config. Or you can use my own config altogether, up to you. This is going to be in my blog post. There's going to be an article, which is the one that you see here, is the one that I'm going to be going over in Neovim, right? So all of the commands, all of the text that you see that I'm following in Neovim is going to be available in this article. So you can just go and read if you don't want to watch the video over again. Also, like you can see here on the right hand side, I just want to thank the supporters. I have YouTube memberships. So here are the YouTube supporters. I also have um, this other membership for Kofi donations, super chats, and the people that have donated in coffee. All of them are listed here. So thanks to each one of you. I also opened up my Discord server. So in case that you want to join the Discord server, if you have questions, if you want to chat with other people, I'm going to leave the link in the video description. And you can also follow me on social media. I'm going to leave all the links in here. So have I used Obsidian? That's the first question. Or did I ever use Obsidian? I did. I did use it for almost like a year. I installed a lot of different plugins on it. I love the tool. I used it every day. And I talked to my wife about it for many, many hours. So yes, I do have experience with Obsidian. I would say that quite a lot. If you want to read a little bit more about it, I'm going to leave that here. The video would be a little bit too long if I go over each one of the items here. But if, for example, you want to see the list of the plugins that I used back when I used Obsidian, you'll be able to find them here. I left an image. You'll be able to see that in the blog post. So if I loved Obsidian so much, why did I start moving away from it? The main reason is because I got used to Neovim so much. I got used to the Vim motions, the different ways of manipulating text in Neovim, and I didn't have that available in Obsidian. Another main reason is because I spend most of my day in the terminal. If it's Neovim or maybe SSH into a device or something. And for my notes, I needed to go back to Obsidian. I didn't like that. I just prefer to stay in the terminal for as long as possible because it allows me to move faster and do things faster. And another reason is because I couldn't view images in Neovim in the terminal. I didn't know how to do it back in the day. Notice that I keep all the headings folded in Neovim, right? So if I hit enter here, it's going to unfold this heading. I have a lot of different key maps that I use for folding stuff. So if I do ZK, it's going to fold all the headings of level two. ZU is going to unfold everything. I can fold them again with a ZK. So I just do this because it allows me to navigate a markdown file faster. I left some images about this in the blog post as well. So if we scroll down here a little bit more, you're going to notice the images there. If you're reading this instead of going through the video, so you'll understand a little bit better. So this is something that I do in Neovim pretty easily. Well, you have to set it up, but I got used to it so much that when I went back to Obsidian, I couldn't replicate the same thing. So I just felt slower when I was back in Obsidian. But remember, that's just my personal experience. If you want to learn how I configure folds, I have a video. You'll be able to find it here in the guide as well. In Obsidian, there's also this plugin, the Outline plugin. Well, it's not a plugin in Obsidian. It's just a feature that it has. And I really liked it a lot. So I discovered this plugin called the Outline plugin. If I type liter O or space O, notice that it shows me the outline. Space O hides it again. So the same thing that I had in Obsidian, I can have here in Neovim. I can jump to a heading if I want here, or I can hide it, I can bring it up again, and I can just hit enter on one of them, and it's just gonna take me to that heading. Again, if you wanna learn more about this outline plugin, I have a video and I'm going to leave it here in the blog post and in the video description as well. Another thing that I used to do in Obsidian a lot was to link notes together. I do the same thing in Neovim, but I use a plugin called Marksman. There is another plugin called obsidian.envim. I don't use it. I don't understand the reason behind the plugin. I tried it, but I didn't see any benefits. I just stick to this Marksman and it works quite nice. I don't have a dedicated video about Marksman. So if you want me to create one, just let me know down in the comments. But just to give you a quick idea on how Marksman works, let me go to another file. I'm going to go to this repo and I'm going to link it to another note, right? So I'm just going to add here, double open square brackets. And I'm going to type something. I'm going to type bind nine. Notice that this is a note directly, right? I'm just going to accept this suggestion. I'm going to type um, 
pound symbol. Notice that I'm just going to type here transfer and I get the heading there. I'm just going to accept this. And now these two nodes are linked together. If I type GD, it's going to take me to that other file, right? So you can see that it's linked to this heading directly. Just going to go back to the previous file. That's the way that I link nodes together. I don't do it that often, but just so that you know that it's possible. You can read more about it here. It uses the LSP protocol and it provides completion, go to definition, find references, rename refactoring, diagnostics, and more. The next item that I have here on the list is how to view images in NeoVim. So if I jump back to this file, you're going to notice that I have several different images here, right? So I can view the images in NeoVim. If I jump back to my blog post, you're going to notice that I have some images in here as well which are the images that we were just looking at. For example, here is one of them. So this is pretty handy. If I'm editing my blog post, I want to view images. So this makes it possible. To be able to view images in NeoVim, there is something that you need to do. There is a plugin that you need to configure and a few other things that you need to be aware of. So go and make sure you check this video out. Remember, I'm going to leave it in the video description. What else do we have here? How to paste images in NeoVim. I have a very advanced key map that allows me to paste images in different formats. I can even change the resolution of an image if I want to. Let me quickly show you how this works. I'm just going to jump back to my blog post and I'm just going to paste an image somewhere here, right? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to take a screenshot of something. Just going to grab my mouse and I'm just going to select what I see here. Just selected it. That is in my clipboard. So now if I type here, Alt 1, you're going to notice that a pop-up shows up. Is this a thumbnail image? I'm just going to type here format. Let's give that a try. Formats. We selected that. What format do I want to store the image in? Let's say that I want to store it in WebP. I just hit enter here. Do I want to change the image resolution? Let's say that I want to make it smaller in size, right? So I'm just going to say yes. Enter the max height. I'm going to give it a different height. Let's say 540, right? Just as an example. It's going to look really bad, but this is just an example. So I'm just going to hit enter here. Enter the image name, 540 image, right? So I'm just going to hit enter and notice that the image was pasted there. New image test. I'm just going to move that here. Just move the image there. And notice that we can see the image there. It's listed here. If I want to see this image in Finder, I can do that as well. Leader IF is going to show me the image there. Notice the formats, right? It's WebP is the extension. And we can also see that it's only 121 kilobytes. Now I'm just going to delete this image because I don't need it there anymore. Delete the image, yes, and it was deleted. I'm just going to delete this as well, and my file is back to normal. Again, if you want to know how I paste images in NeoVim, it's another topic. It requires a video on its own, so I'm going to leave it in the blog post, but remember that it's also going to be in the video description. What else do we have next? I can also upload images to Imgur from NeoVim. That's something that I used to do back in Obsidian when I was taking notes for university courses. I didn't want to keep some images locally. So I have a key map that does this as well. It allows me to upload the images directly to my own Imgur account. And I explain all of the setup in the video shown here. Remember that it's also going to be in the video description. But in case that you want to see it in action, let me just show you real quick. I'm just going to grab this image that I have here in my clipboard. Just copied it. And I'm just going to type here Alt I, uploading the image to Imgur. You're going to notice that it was uploaded. I get the link here and I can see the image there without any issues. I can also open this uh, link. Let's give it a try. If I type here GX, it's going to open it in the browser. And you're going to notice that the image is there and it's in my own account. You can see that I'm logged in and I can delete that image. So it means that it's in my account. What else do we have down here? How to create and open the daily notes in NeoVim. That's something that I did a lot as well in Obsidian, right? So if I'm here in my browser and I press hyper TR, you're going to notice that it takes me to this daily note and I can start typing some text in here, right? Let's say that I'm in a different application. I'm in another TMAC session, right? And I just type here hyper TR is also going to take me to my daily note. So it's pretty useful in case that you use the daily note a lot in NeoVim. I also implemented it. It requires setup. So I created another video for this. You'll be able to find it in the video description. And I go over all of the setup instructions in that video. So go and check it out. Notice the next item here is how to manage tasks in NeoVim. Notice that here on the right hand side, I have this other application. It's called Skitty Notes. It's just something that I came up with, right? I can mark tasks as done with leader X, right? Marks it as done, leader X. But notice that the tasks are not removed from there. Sometimes I don't want the tasks to remain there. So what did I do? 
I came up with another key map. If I type here Alt X, notice that the task is not there anymore. Alt X, Alt X. So if you notice at the very bottom of the file, in the completed task section, there is where the tasks are. It moved them there. It added the date and time in which they were completed. I can toggle them here as well again. Alt X, notice that it's untoggled now. And I can toggle it back, Alt X. Just gonna undo these changes because I wanna have the tasks there at the very top. Notice that I'm here in my blog post and I'm going to type leader TT and that is going to show me the tasks that have not been completed. Notice that these are in a different file, right? So I can go through each one of them and I can go to one and mark it as done if I want to. Or if I want to list the tasks that have been completed, I can also type leader TC and it's going to show them to me there as well. So I can quickly jump to this if I wanted to and I can see the completed task there. Again, if you want to learn more about the app that you see on the right hand side, which is Kitty Notes, I have a video for that. And if you want to learn how I manage the tasks, how I create the key maps and how they work and all that, I have another video, which is this one, Neovim Task Management. So go and check them out. Something that you need to keep in mind is that I recently moved over from Telescope to the Snack Speaker. If you're a Neovim user, you're going to know what I'm talking about. If you want to learn how I did it, why I did it, I have this video as well. If you're new to Neovim, just don't worry about this. Something else that I did use in Obsidian as well was auto push to GitHub because there's a Git plugin that allows you to do this. I created my own script. It auto pushes every three minutes to GitHub. So if I make changes in my Obsidian repo, they're automatically going to be pushed. I use the same script on the Skitty Notes app on the right hand side. I don't have a dedicated video for this yet. If you want me to create one, let me know down in the comments. But if you want to find the script, I'm going to leave a link here in the blog post. So go and check this out. Also notice down below that there is a Markdown Preview plugin in Neovim. This is in case that you want to preview a file in a smoother way. And if, for example, you want to save it as a PDF or something, right? So if I come back to my blog post, and I type here leader MP, that's the way that I configured it, it's going to open this Markdown Preview plugin, right? So I can scroll the file. Notice that it's easier to scroll. It's smoother to scroll. It's in dark mode and I can print it just as a PDF file. So in case that you have university assignments or something and you need to deliver them, that could be useful as well. Just in case that you want to enable Vim Motions in Obsidian, if you don't want to switch over to NeoVim but you want to use the Vim Motions, I'm going to leave the instructions on how I did it here in the blog post as well. So you can go and check those out. But basically, I use the same Vim RC file that I have for Vim, but in Obsidian, right? So the steps are included in here. Some people may wonder, what about the data view plugin in Obsidian? I was never a big fan. I didn't use the data view plugin in Obsidian. Why? Because I didn't want to become dependent on Obsidian for my markdown files. What do I mean by this? I didn't know if Obsidian was going to be the tool that I was going to use for markdown for the rest of my life or not. And data view is only available for Obsidian. So I decided not to use it since the beginning. I don't miss it. I don't need it. If you don't know what the data view plugin is in Obsidian, I left a video here. You can go and check it out. And if you know about an alternative for NeoVim, please let us know down in the comments because I created an Obsidian versus NeoVim video some time ago. And that is one of the things that people brought up. So if you know, please just share the information with others. One other big one is what about Excalidraw? I don't use Excalidraw too much, right? If I ever need to do something in Excalidraw, I just open the bookmark that I have, right? So if I type here, this, and then I just type Excalidra, you're going to notice that it's going to bring me up here. It opens it and that's it. I don't need to do it on Neovim. I never used it in Obsidian as well. So I just use the web-based version, the browser version. Obsidian also has a mobile app. So what about that mobile app? I don't like taking notes in the mobile app on the phone. I don't like reading notes on my phone as well, but there is an option. Remember that I automatically push my Obsidian notes to GitHub. So I just downloaded the GitHub mobile app. I can view the notes in there. Notice that this is the raw version of a note. But if you click on this thing here that says view as HTML, as you can see on the second image, this is what you get. So you can view the notes on your phone as well. You can also directly edit the notes in there and commit. So in case that you need to edit notes on your phone, you can do it directly in the GitHub mobile app as well. Obsidian Graph View, that is something that other people mentioned as well, that they like Graph View. Honestly, to me, this is just something aesthetic. I never used it. I don't like it. I don't see its purpose. 
Some people say that it helps them to see how their notes are linked to each other or something like that. But honestly, not for me, I don't miss it. But I do understand and respect that some people do like it a lot. How do I search for files in NeoVim compared to Obsidian? If you noticed, now that I was here, if I type space space, it brings up this file picker. So I can navigate through all my different nodes. This is my Obsidian repo, right? So space space. I just see all of the different nodes. I can jump to them. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Oh, I was not aware that the snacks picker has an image preview right now. Honestly, I was not aware that this was possible yet. So kudos to Folky. If you want to learn how I navigate files in Neovim, I also have a video. I would recommend you to go and check it out. It's not something that I can cover in this short video here. Remember that I moved from Telescope to the Snacks Picker. Here's the link again if you want to go and check that video out. The things that I do in this video are just a few of the things that I do with Markdown files in Neovim. I do way more. If you want to understand and learn more about my entire Markdown workflow, I have this other video. It's 40 minutes long but I would highly recommend you to check it out. You're going to get a lot of tips and tricks from that video. And that is also going to help you understand how my config works. So do I hate Obsidian or what's going on? Why am I doing all this? No, I don't hate it. I just found something else that accommodates to my needs better, right? That is Neovim. I'm not saying Obsidian is bad. It's a wonderful tool. If all you want to do is take notes. Matter of fact, it's a specialized application for you to take notes. It was just not enough for me anymore after I tested Neovim. Right, so now I just want to keep everything in Neovim. They do offer additional features or extra stuff like Obsidian Sync. If you want to sync your notes between devices like your computer, mobile phone and all that, it's something that you have to pay for. I'm going to leave the link here. Also, if you want to publish your notes like in a blog type of format, similar to the blog post that you're looking at right now, you can do it. They have this Obsidian Publish service as well. I'm going to leave a link here if you want to check it out as well. So this video was just mainly to show you that there are things that you do in Obsidian that you can do in Neovim, just in case that you're interested. It does require a little bit of work to set everything up. If you don't want to do that, remember that you can use my config directly. Everything is already set up there. And just go to the prerequisite section to understand how to install my config. I did cover everything that I needed to cover. If there are any other suggestions, ideas that you have regarding Obsidian stuff that you can do in Neovim, please leave them in the comments. I always want to learn new stuff. Hope this video was useful. I'll see you in the next one.